Mini DSP is a newcomer into the audio industry. The Chinese company specializes in creating DSPs, digital signal processors. DSP isn't exactly a new idea. They've been around for a long time, but Mini DSP has made them accessible and affordable. Today we're going to be talking about the 2x4 HD, which is one of their cheaper and more popular models, how I use it, how it works, and how it sounds. Let's first start off with the main reason why you'd want a Mini DSP. A Mini DSP, especially this one in particular, can do three main things for your sound system. Frequency response, crossover, and time alignment. What you're going to need to have to do frequency response correction is to have a measurement microphone. Mini DSP sells their U-Mic 1 for $75, or $70 if you bundle it with a DSP, or Dayton sells the AMM6, and there's a couple other manufacturers that make great measurement mics. Almost all of them should come with a calibration file, which um, basically shows you, which is basically compensates for the natural frequency response of the microphone and makes it perfectly flat. This is very important. You can't just use any microphone, you must use a measurement microphone. So to explain to you why you need to correct your frequency response, I could take a perfectly flat measuring speaker that's 100% flat from 0 to 20,000 hertz in an anechoic chamber and then put it into a room. It would not be anywhere near flat. You'd have dips and peaks and everything based off reflections and room modes and a bunch of other stuff. Now the Mini DSP will allow you to compensate um, for those dips and peaks using equal and opposite dips and peaks. Mini DSP recommends that you use a third party software called Room EQ Wizard, which allows you to create the measurement and create an auto EQ profile for it, um, which is essentially a, a collection of filters which will create the flat frequency response you're looking for, or the flat, flattest frequency response you're looking for. Room EQ Wizard is, is relatively easy to use. Um, and allows you, is it's very flexible and you can choose how aggressive you want the DSP to work, etc. The 2x4 HD will allow you to put a maximum of 10 filters per channel, so 10 separate adjustments per channel. Now this should be enough, but some other more expensive solutions will allow you to put more. It's just a trade-off for the price. Before we start the review, I wanted to do a really quick physical overview. The Mini DSP 2x4 HD, as the name suggests, has two analog inputs and four analog outputs. It should really be called the 4x4 HD because it actually has another two digital inputs, a Toslink SPDIF input and a USB audio stream input. So this could be used as a digital to analog converter, although if you use the analog inputs as I do, it's used as an analog to digital, digital to analog converter. Now, um, some people might say, well, that's pointless because then any DAC purchase that has a better DAC than the one that's built in will be, you know, pointless because this is a worse DAC. So all the benefits that you would have gained by having a nice DAC are then, you know, irrelevant because of because this is in the chain. And while that's true, the thinking around it is that the benefits that DSPing your system can bring uh, greatly outweigh the negatives that uh, that not having a perfect DAC. And also, if you really we're going for like, you know, summit Phi DAC territory. I wouldn't be looking at a $205 DSP. I'd be looking at something like a DEQX or something that's in the thousand, you know, $3,000 category, which m would have a much better analog to digital uh, and digital analog converters built in. Now I'm going to put up some graphs of my system before and after EQ. Uh, you can see that there's quite a big difference and overall the response is much flatter after EQ than before EQ. Now I'm going to put up a graph of my subwoofers before and after EQ. As you can see, this is where most of the changes I saw happened, in the bass. Um, it's much, much flatter um, after EQ. Now let's talk about another way the Mini DSP works in my system, as a crossover. A crossover is a combination of a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter. As the name suggests, a low-pass filter passes lower frequencies and a high-pass filter passes higher frequencies. Now the combination of these two meet at one point, they're curved, so they meet at one point, and that's the crossover point. Before I had the Mini DSP, I had a MTX HTX V1 crossover, and that was a great little unit. It allowed me to choose my crossover points, but unfortunately it didn't allow me to change the slopes or phase or anything like that. The Mini DSP has an insane amount of slopes you can change from, 6 dB, 12 dB, 24 dB, 18 dB, 48 dB, 64 dB. The point is there's a lot of them. 
and you can choose between Linkwitz, Riley, and Butterworth slopes. So huge amount of flexibility. Now, I ended up choosing a 70 hertz crossover point at a 24 decibel per octave uh, Linkwitz Riley filter. Now, when I say 24 decibel per octave, that means every octave you go past the crossover point, you're going to be down 24 decibels from the original level. Now, let's talk about the third part, time alignment. Um, if in, the time alignment can work for two separate uh, applications. If you are building a crossoverless speaker and allowing the mini DSP to do the crossover in the digital domain, a lot of Linkwitz's designs like the LX Mini do this, a time alignment will allow you to align the tweeter and the woofer so that the sounds emitted from them will hit your ear at precisely the same time. Now, because my speakers have physical crossovers built into them already, and my speaker's sloped baffle physically time aligns them, um, my time alignment will be between my speakers and my subwoofers. Now, um, you can either you can do physical time alignment, which is the measurement from how far away the subwoofer cone is from your ear and how far away the speaker is from your ear, and the distance between those two is, you know, how many feet you need to compensate or how many inches you need to compensate in terms of time alignment. But what I wanted to mainly focus on was, uh, you know, crossover time alignment. Now, every crossover in a speaker causes a little bit of phase shift. Phase shift is the same thing as time shift. So I wanted to compensate for that in terms of the difference between my subwoofer and my speaker. Now this is easy to do with an impulse. Rumi Key Wizard allowed me to put in an impulse into my speaker and an impulse in my sub. So when I put the two graphs over each other, I could you know, take a look at the time difference between the, uh, when the impulse of my speaker started and when the impulse of my sub started and compensate for that. Now I noticed a huge difference um, in terms of the transient response, the punchiness, the quality of the bass, it sounded like one full speaker instead of a speaker and a sub. It was an amazing difference. So now that I've talked a little bit about of objective differences and you've seen the graphs and etc., I'm going to talk about how the Mini DSP unit sounds to my ears. First of all, the biggest changes I heard were in the bass section. The bass was significantly smoother. There weren't nearly as many peaks and dips in the response. Bass sounded so smooth and just sounded really, really good. Um, I, I'd say it, it sounded like I got completely different subwoofers. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Bass was much better. Mid-range was significantly better as well. Uh, it was a lot easier to listen to. Um, you know, it was like, I, it was, when I sat down and I listened to music, it wasn't as much of just sitting and listening to music. It was more like, I was like, really like enjoying the music more. It was much more enjoyable to listen to. Um, the mid-range, uh, specifically the vocals, really popped out of the mix more, which I noticed and I really liked that. Um, and the only negative I noticed in the mid-range was that the imaging was moved forward, closer to my face. I prefer an imaging that's pushed far back behind the speakers, but the imaging was moved forward. Thankfully, uh, No Audio File, which is a website, I'll link it in the description below, the dude that runs it came up with a filter that you can just copy and paste into a... Uh, into the mini DSP, which will push the imaging back on some speakers. Uh, and it worked beautifully for my speakers, so as far as I'm concerned, that's a success. In the treble, uh, this was a big change as well. Uh, the treble section was significantly better. Uh, my speakers were always a little bright. That really tamed the brightness of my speakers. Sibilance was a lot you know, less noticeable. Overall, the, you know, the treble quality was much smoother and I really prefer the sound of it DSP versus non-DSP. Just to make sure I wasn't going insane, I actually brought this DSP box over to a buddy's house who has Klipsch Bells, uh, Altec Model 19, uh, Technics 7070 BAs, I'm pretty sure that's the name of the speaker, and a huge amount of amplifiers. So we put um, the mini DSP into a system, we did some really rough measurements and some really rough DSP, and he was blown away by the difference between the non-DSP and DSP uh, result, especially in subwoofer integration. His Klipsch bells have a very, very quick uh, horn-loaded uh, woofer, and he wanted to find a subwoofer that would keep up. And he was reading online, and you know, and everybody was saying you need to have a horn-loaded sub did that would keep up with the horn-loaded woofer of the Klipsch bells, but. Um, after DSPing and time aligning the subwoofer and the uh, Klipsch Bell speakers, we noticed that the uh, uh, transient response and quickness of the bass was fast enough that it was much more enjoyable 
um, with the subwoofer than without the subwoofer. The benefits that having the subwoofer brought were significantly uh, more than the negatives of maybe some quickness issues. So overall, we really, really liked the uh, mini DSP solution for his system. I really like the mini DSP solution for my system. And that guy's about to spend $1,500 into three separate mini DSP units to put in every one of his systems in his house. So yeah, and there's a, a pretty significant difference. Overall, to conclude this review, I'm going to recommend the D mini DSP solution. They have so many different processors, uh, the two by four, the four by 10, so many different processors, it's, it's almost a joke. Um, so I guarantee you, you're going to find one for your needs. Uh, it's a really great unit. It allows you to smooth your response, tweak your system, really brings out the best of what the equipment you have right now. And considering that other DSP solutions are very expensive, this is one of the cheaper ones out there. The different, the changes, the improvements that it brings are really pretty huge considering the price tag of only $205. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to stay subscribed for more reviews and uh, leave me a comment on your thoughts, any questions you have, and uh, happy listening.